Hello everyone, my name is Filip Manilov and in this video we'll be drinking the new collection of shoe pours from Moi Chai website that my brother has kindly brought to me from Amsterdam. Welcome to Tea Tuesday. You could see on my side here I have a couple of teas. Well, in fact I have eight of them and I basically just got tea cakes because I like the way these are packaged and just the whole experience of having a cake of tea is quite nice. I do enjoy breaking it down rather than the loose leaf tea. I think it's a bit of an experience plus just the whole aesthetic of it is super pleasant. So. I guess, first of all, I want to begin by saying a big thank you to Moi Chai team and Sergey. They have done an amazing job producing this tea and hopefully it turns out very well. I'll be trying it, I'll be tasting it and seeing how that tea is. I'll be giving you my opinions on it. But I got pretty much the whole range of the new shoe pours. And also I want to say a big thank you to my brother. He has kindly brought it from Amsterdam. And thank you very much, Peter. So the first tea we have here is Bada Shio. I wouldn't be guessing what that means. Maybe I'll put a translation later or you can have a look for yourself. Honestly, I'll be frank with you, I don't quite care what it means. The packaging is here. That's the first tea. I'll be starting in a way that's going from the cheaper tea to more expensive tea. I think that's quite a convenient way of tasting it. However, I will mention that most of these teas, they are not so much different in their price. So the price varies gradually from one tea to another but I would say the change is quite small so I'm not expecting a big difference in the flavors however I would hope there is a big difference I think that would be just a good experience to taste rather than different type of tea types of tea yeah I mean you will see later in the video I just want to mention that the packaging and the designs of this tea is really good I do really like it and also something to mention is just the size of the cakes so I'll start off with this one for example right not very hard I'll probably not be brewing too much because I'll be drinking a couple of them maybe not all, the all at the same time maybe I'll, I'll drink a couple today a couple later on so that's why I have chosen my small teapot nice and convenient for that purpose it's probably not the most proper teapot for this type of tea because it has quite thin outer walls well thin walls in general and these walls are supposed to be a bit thicker for shoe pours because the darker teas they tend to like um, to be in a very hot environment as in the teapot so I guess this one just loses its heat a little bit quicker but I, th I would say, from a personal experience, the, dr the difference is so small that you wouldn't probably notice. I, I don't think I noticed, so... But that's just a way that stands, tends to be in a crockery in China. That's how they tend to decide which one to use. So 
I think I just put just enough, maybe five grams. I like to put more, but I usually drink it with someone or in, in a company. So it's just more suitable for this case to put less tea. So I'm also not gonna be drinking it too much. It is quite quiet for me here because I closed the window for the sake of this video and I also turned off all the music because I don't want it to be in the background on the of the video but I will put it later on so you will get to enjoy some nice music that I do tend to listen while I'm drinking tea and yeah but for me it's just the concentration of the running water I guess and the steam So, as some of you may know, what I've just done, I just as so-called washed the tea and in China there is a tradition, it's partially a tradition and it's partially a way that is preferable to drink tea. So I washed the tea in order to get rid of the initial dust that might have accumulated on the tea leaves while they have been stored on the rather factory or the storage facility and also all the potential dirt that could have been pl uh, placed on the tea while it was on the floor, while it was collected, while it was transported, just all these processes of actually making the tea itself. So the first brew is genuinely poured away. Some lighter teas, this method is not quite required, but I just tend to do it because it's also a nice procedure because not only that it washes away all the potential dust, as you could say, but it also warms up the tea leaves, it opens them up a little bit, it humidifies them, so it gets a bit of water and I would say it's generally a good way to enjoy the second one rather than the first brew. So we have our tea here. I didn't brew it too strong. Maybe I'll do a second one stronger. Let's try it. Well, it has a very nice flavor. Yeah, very nice and balanced. I do really enjoy it. It's not striking, but I would say it's a very pleasing flavor. Can give some tea to the pet. I have this frog here. He also likes to enjoy the tea. Honestly, I wouldn't say there is much to say about this particular tea. So, I'm not gonna package it properly, but it's got this cat. Honestly, wonder what makes them choose certain images, certain textures certain ways 
to show and portray the team. Just want to know what sort of creative thoughts and ideas come to mind of an artist and a designer in these packages. I guess that's on a side note. So how do you do it? There's a bit of origami if I manage to fold this thing. Some of them they have a really nice fold and it's genuinely quite easy to fold it back. Or on the other hand some of them don't quite have these folds which makes it a bit more tricky to fold it into original cake. I guess I sort of managed to do it here. Yeah. That'll do the job. I mean I'll be opening it and closing any time all the all the time anyways, so this tea down I'll just put it aside. So, I'll do a second room. Just want to check if the camera is recording because I don't want to be doing it all over again. camera is recording, it's all good. The thing with this video I decided I don't want to rush, I don't have anywhere to rush right now. It's the evening, not too late and also some of the videos I guess, tea reviews especially, they would be rushing and talking, making it quick so I guess if you wanna rush through it, maybe, I mean a 2x bottom probably wouldn't help you. I wanna make a short summary of the teas in the end of the video and put it there, just the key ideas. But this is just a relaxing way to spend an evening and enjoy some tea, of course. Honestly, this tea is really nice. I do like it. It's not outstanding or something extraordinary, something that I've never tasted before. But it's really like a classic good shoe pour. I think if the tea brings you a smile, it's a good tea. And this is just the first tea. So I really put big hopes for the later teas. And I want to mention that I watched a brief video that Sergey made on his YouTube channel that I might put in the description if you want to watch this one because he just introduced, he, he's done a brief introduction to the collection. I think it's not only these cakes, he also shows some other tea cakes, there's probably white tea and some shen pours. I personally just like a lot of shoe pours and I drink them the most. And I decided to make just a video on the shoe pours. I might probably do a video later about some other teas, but I think for that case I just picked the one that I enjoyed the most. And there we are. So basically Sergei was mentioning in his video that some of the 
more expensive ones, I think. Probably these ones. I got these couple. These two cakes. He said they ought to be really good. So, yeah. I do hope they are good. I mean, so far I'm very impressed with this one. It's also really good to consider the actual price of the tea. So this one wasn't wasn't expensive. You can check it out. It's probably ten dollars, literally. Or I guess I have the receipt somewhere. Maybe say like nine euros, eight euros. And my brother got it for. Honestly, don't know what currency you gonna be referring to. I actually usually put the price on the tea of my collection is in in euros and like euros per grams something like that i tend to have a little note saying how much the tea costs i don't think this will be among the expensive range however it's really good for its price so i guess it's an important factor that everyone has to consider i kind of want some more but let's move on to the next one I'll have to throw the leaves away, so we'll be back in a minute. So our next tea is Power of Bulan. It says it's harvested in 2019 and pressed in 2023. COVID tea. Probably, it's pure, nice and pure, because a lot of transport was moving around the world in 2019, or whenever the COVID was happening, so could be a bit fresher, less chemicals, less pollutants in the air, maybe that impacts the flavor. I do like this packaging. Quite cool. And yeah, very interesting. It's got a bit of calligraphy. Cool. Bit softer this one. Yeah, I guess I'll have to be collecting the tea all over my room after this video. Because it kind of jumps everywhere. The teapot, my carpet. And I want a bit more. So yeah, again I'm putting probably about five grams or so. Not too much. There we go. Give it a shake. Basically what this does it warms up the dry tea leaves and because the pot is a little bit humid also gives it a bit of humidity but more importantly you could experience the aroma of the tea very good for too long in the first brew. Washed away all the dust. Yeah, 
Yeah, what tends to happen in the first brown, not only wash the tea, but I get to warm up the cups, give a little wash to the teapot, and to the frog. Basically, this guy is a teapot or tea god. Different versions. Doesn't really have a big purpose. However, this is questionable because some could argue it does have a big purpose. I guess it's a matter of viewing at things. I would personally say it's not crucial to tea drinking. I mean, you can drink tea just in a cup, just with hot water and putting tea leaves in it. But it does add a nice element to the whole tea ceremony. Because like that, he's kind of supervising the process or overseeing and making sure everything is good. So he also forms a little company. Because I mean, right now I'm alone. I mean, hopefully the ghost is somewhere outside. Um, the ghost is always welcome to join. There is a friendly ghost around here. Occasionally comes around, opens doors. So this tea god, tea frog in my case, is supervising the whole tea ceremony. He likes to enjoy a bit of tea and he is also making some bubbles while he drinks tea. Extra enjoyment. So we got our second tea, I think the power of Bulan it was called. Let me just try to fold it back in place again. I found that the way to fold it was to find the end bit of the paper and then start folding from the adjacent one because that's where it was initially Hold it and that helps maybe that's not the case with this tea but that's genuinely how it was folded so I think I'm getting quite close to it and honestly I do accept the fact that some of you may not really care but maybe some of you will actually prefer tea cake to be put in place like it was originally packaged or at least similar I mean I tend to like it maybe someone else does so I must admit it's a bit annoying because my video interrupted and it stopped recording while I was talking and chatting about this tea but I guess I have the opportunity to wrap it up a little bit until the little philosophy I was telling later on down the video. So I get to enjoy this third brew, luckily, because of the video interruption. So I get to taste some more of this tea. And what I was saying about this particular one is that its flavor is not super exaggerated in any particular way and I can just mention that if I was to say any particular thing that comes up to my mind or an association it's a bit of cork flavor that's probably how I could describe it and you might have a different flavor you might have uh, something else that comes to your mind and this is absolutely possible maybe i'll leave a links i'll leave a link to this tea down below to all these teas that i'm drinking today and you are free to buy them and explore for yourself so yeah what i want to say is maybe you have already tried these teas Leave your thoughts in the comments below. 
tell me maybe I did miss out on something and you could perhaps explain me where I could have looked more maybe there is a flavor that I didn't quite notice I did brew this third one for a bit longer and it did become quite dark, which I do like. It's getting a bit late, so I hope I'm not gonna be struggling to fall asleep. Which I could, then I'll do something. Genuinely, I wouldn't be recommending drinking a lot of tea, especially strong, dark, like shupuer, just before night. But I've been expecting and waiting to film this video for some time, so I think I'm okay with it. I just finished this particular tea, the Power of Bulan. Was really good. And let's move on to next tea. So I'm ready to be brewing the next tea. And the next tea we have here, which is called Black Rivers. This one. Got a teapot on the front cover and let's see what it's like. Oh, this one is way harder than the previous teas. It's also just how they're pressed. Some are pressed stronger, some are pressed in a bit more light manner. Personally, I don't think it makes a big difference. Just an observation that I made throughout drinking tea is that if the tea is pressed too hard, when you break it down again into tea leaves and tea fractures, it tends to break a bit more. So I'd probably prefer a medium press, whereas Obviously not too light, but not too hard as well, not too strong. Because if it's too compressed, then honestly, I mean, when I'm just breaking it, it, it almost becomes like so broken and just completely, you cannot actually see the leaves afterwards at all. Not the most awesome experience. Flavor-wise, don't think it makes a big difference, but yeah, maybe also, I guess, could make some difference to flavor, because as I'm thinking about it, let's analyze it. So when you have tea that is super pressed, therefore it wouldn't have a lot of oxygen access or just the access to air, access to humidity that could be acting and joining together with the tea or somehow interacting with it. That's commonly how tea ages. And the tea ages with the process. Oh, I've done a funny thing here, fine. So the tea ages by interacting with the environment that it's present in so that's why it's all, always never a good idea to put tea in some environment with maybe a lot of smells and flavors around. Definitely not chemicals, definitely not next to coffee. Because the tea has a tendency to absorb these flavors and odors that are present in the air and in the surrounding atmosphere and it will probably significantly damage its qualities over time which is not advisable 
But as I was saying about the hard press or medium press of the tea, I think it does impact the flavor of the tea, probably on the long run. I might be wrong, give me your thoughts in the comments below what you think about this. But I do operate from the realms of logic that when you have a super hardly pressed tea, it's not really exposed to the environment that is present in, at least the middle of the tea or the middle of the tea cake. It's not really present there. Whereas compared to a more loosely pressed tea, some of the air particles, some of the water particles, they have an opportunity to enter and penetrate deeper into the core of the tea that I think does impact the overall flavor over time. Maybe small, maybe large, depends. Everything always depends. So that's our first brew. Just gonna wait a little bit. Hmm. What can I say about this one? They all have a slight gradation, but it's quite subtle, as I was sort of expecting. But this makes this tea tasting experience quite challenging. In a way challenging in the way of determining flavors and discussing the differences of these teas because essentially they're from the same family of teas and they're all dark shoopwares they're all from a similar price range so that does make it quite difficult I mean, it's really nice, really good. Again, probably I wouldn't call it anything outstanding, but it is balanced, it is well put together, flavor-wise. Has some aftertaste to it. I think I'm gonna move on to the next one. Because I still have quite a few teas to drink. But yeah, this one also dark, classic, rich with flavor. Do recommend. I have to get some more water, so I'll be back. I'm back with some more water. Just refill the jug. I am aware that this video is turning out quite long. I didn't really have a time limit on it or a particular time frame. I thought I just wanted to drink some tea, relax, talk about some tea and just enjoy the whole process, the whole ceremony. I am thinking of breaking this video into two parts. So this will be part one where I have four teas and in the second part I'll have the second four teas right because I have the total of four well total of eight teas and because I'm not really rushing anywhere and no pun intended and it just probably is more convenient and you can watch it in two parts Now maybe you have a preferred part. <laughs> so we have the next tea, this one called the void, ripe for 
which means shoe puer. Honestly, I don't know if I completely buy the terminology of ripe, roll puer. Yeah, it is just a bit sort of confusing to me in a different way. Rather, I understand what tea it is, but just probably not the most correct terminology in my understanding to call it ripe and raw puer. So, raw as referred to shan puer, and ripe as referred to shu puer. Shu in Chinese. I, culture is a dark puer and it came after shan puer so shan is the traditional the very ancient way of making tea shan puer and as it aged it became darker naturally and then with time it became more popular, I guess, in the 20th century. Oh, I'm just literally breaking down into a little paper of the tea, but fine. So in the 20th century, it became a bit more popular. And they started thinking of some ways of popularizing this tea. And making it cheaper. And one of the ways that they found is by artificially aging this tea in a way so i wouldn't say i'm an expert in this process of making shu puer or either shen puer but as from what i know is that it is more cooked so it's le uh, as far as i'm aware from the process it is put in this big yeah, probably it's not even cooked, but the process is prolonged and it's like extra steps to the Shen Puer. So rather than Shen, shen Puer would be a more classic and traditional way of making it. This involves an extra step into it. So they're put into large heaps of tea and they let it sit and ferment for some time. that also does start up the processes inside the tea that does make it darker so in that way shu puer was born oh i do enjoy this flavor this smell so yeah that's the birth of shu puer and In that way, they probably, there is a bit of a logic calling it more ripe puer because it was fermenting and processing for longer, but I still don't, don't quite agree with it. I mean, probably I just don't accept it in a way, don't, just a personal preference, I, I would never really call it ripe puer. I think in general, I don't really care, but I would prefer to call it Shu Puer or Shan Puer, how it is called in China and how it's been called for hundreds of years. Because definitely in the old times they didn't have a goal of popularizing it, popularizing the whole product, coming up with English names and they just called it as they called it for ages. And I just think I'd like to pay a bit of respect to the tradition in that way and continue calling it genuine names. But I think I have no no real problem with it being called anything else. As long as we all understand each other. Because the communication is always key. Okay. And speaking of the process, I'm not really rushing anywhere and 
it's just about enjoying it, just about embracing the whole procedure, how it's happening, because honestly I think it is probably one of the most important part and probably is the most part important part in tea drinking in that whole tea drinking culture in the maybe across the world not just china it's not how you really drink in terms of what crockery you use what actual tea you use because you can perhaps have the best teapots the best cups the best tea and you might not be enjoying it as much whereas you could have a decent tea and you could just literally put the tea leaves into a cup put some hot water and enjoy it way more in that way so as i'm saying it's mostly coming from within the tea experience allows you to embrace just how you are your current state of mind your current state of thoughts and someone who has perhaps all the best tea all the best uh, cups teapots and maybe sitting in a, some awesome place in their mind they may not be as calm they may not be as present they might have some thoughts that preoccupy their mind and that in a way brings them further from the tea state of mind tea the actual tea ceremony you have to be on a certain tea wave as you can call it in order to just be present I think the whole ceremony, why I like it so much, it just lets you embrace the now. You are just here and you have your thoughts. You are currently experiencing your state of the body, temperature, just the general atmosphere around yourself. And tea is the kind of the agent, the binding agent that lets you just have it. Have it as it is and be in the moment. And I think it's especially important to have these kind of moments. Maybe with yourself, maybe with some other people, like enjoy it in a company because I do often, I, I do tend to enjoy tea in the company of other people and it does bring good conversations to life just a good state of mind, as I could say probably that's the aspect of the tea culture that I value the most is the experiences that it brings and the absolute presence of the moment. You just let go of things and there's nothing really preoccupying on your mind. It lets you just be calm. Because in the current state of the world as it is right now, I just mentioned that there's a lot of factors that are grabbing your attention and if you're perspicacious you probably noticed that modern world is designed in a certain way that is aimed to grabbing your attention and not only aimed to grabbing your attention but it also reduces the attention span of humanity by default. 
because I guess it was inevitable in the way that marketing was developing and in the way that social media is encouraging it into our lives. So it naturally diverged toward that way. So all the content that was being created there had to be super flashy, super catchy and extra attention grabbing. And obviously everyone has to be competing with each other. So it was, it is becoming just more and more and more compressed. And I would really, I do really appreciate if you take your time, if you watch this video, if you listen to it on the background, because honestly, there's not really much to watch. You can just put it on the background, listen on your walk or whatever. Because that's probably what I would do. So, I do appreciate that. Thank you for you, for your attention, <laughs> again. And I'm just taking my time to make this longer form of content because it's a way to just embrace the now. And as I was saying about the social media, it is so concentrated and so polluted with concentrated information and it is just overwhelming ourselves. I did find myself sometime just being too much on social media whereas not really contributing to anything so I was just watching scrolling all of us know it Instagram not really TikTok but mainly Instagram and basically what is designed to do is to always and always keep you hooked and this is just not healthy so in the end even when you get off it you do have a sort of a mental hangover from all this information overload because your brain has been dumped with so much information and so much varying qualities of advertising uh, maybe subconscious advertising some messages some action some something just interesting to you because it's also personalized and targeted towards you I think it's not a it's, it's not too crazy it is targeted towards you I guess we do have to accept that we're constantly being watched in that way, maybe on a passive sort of not very surveillance type of way. But this is all automated and you're being watched by your browsers, by your social media presence, just by your phones, your phones listen to you. This is a common thing I do get some advertisements that just pop up out of nowhere just because I mentioned something in the conversation. Yes, it does happen, but I think we could just we could just live with it. I'm not saying is optimal and the best way that things should be, but I guess that's how the world develops and it will be probably really hard to go against that. So it's just important to understand what's happening and why it's happening. And you don't really have to fight against it. But as someone would say, well, you would actually know, Bruce Lee would say, be water, my friend. And what that would imply is being more fluid, being more flexible with things and the events that are happening in the world and how the world is set. Because you always have to be conscious of what's going on. 
So you're not necessarily, I wouldn't say that fighting against things is the most efficient way of existing. As there is a saying that when the hurricane blew, the big strong trees that resisted the hurricane, they fell down and died. But smaller trees, they were flexible and they followed the direction of the wind. They withstood the hurricane and they happily grew ever after. By being flexible, not by resisting. That is the way that things happen in martial arts too. Especially Asian martial arts. I think I should probably say a couple of words about this tea as I've been going off topic a little bit. So just to mention this tea, I would say it's having a bit more of a richer flavor to it than the other three teas that I drank so far. It has a good aroma to it. And really good aftertaste. I will make some more. format is quite new to my channel. I have made previously a relatively short video about a tea review that I made. It was quite funny in a way because it wasn't really a Chinese tea that I was reviewing and it was a tea bag. Of course, yeah, that you can't really be... well I'm probably against tea bags anyways. But yeah, I made this video about a tea bag so and it was quite a short one but as I'm drinking proper tea right now I'm just thinking what kind of what kind of format this series could be in and I do prefer a longer format for this kind of content because I don't really be, want to be rushing anywhere and just hurrying the point is to embrace it as I was saying so there'll be probably more lengthy videos and I might be doing a shorter versions that I could be talking about a specific topic for 15 minutes or so not really a long format tea review video what I might be doing also down the line is not really a tea, tea review video but it's also probably gonna be Tea Tuesday and I'll have some kind of topic to discuss because as I mentioned before tea puts you in a really nice state of mind where you just let your thoughts flow and share your opinions in some way just a very calming calming way to enjoy an evening I do recommend to everyone because you're not quite meditating but it brings you to a very relaxed calm meditative state of mind and I do enjoy it a lot I'm not exactly sure if this is a bit of a mind game 
when I'm thinking this tea is a bit better than the previous ones. So that, that's the fourth one I'm drinking tonight. And I think I'm gonna stop here just because it's getting a little bit late. But I would, I would probably say so far this one was the best. Again, my mind might be playing a little trick with me that, yeah, this is a bit up the line of the price range. Or it could be not. Let me know if anyone has tried these teas. Let me know what you think about them. So far they've all been really good. And I did really enjoy it. But also what's important is the state of mind that they bring you to. And so far I think we had a really good conversation. And if you enjoyed it, leave a like. Do subscribe to the channel. This will probably be the end of part one. I will be making a part two later. Enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your evening. Just enjoy life, everyone. Thank you for watching.